Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day six of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is ancient. This is an interesting pick because over the last few years, a trend that I've noticed is old games that were seemingly abandoned suddenly getting a new chance at life. I think I first started seeing this trend when I noticed that an old favorite in Feng Shui had gotten a revitalization. But there's been other instances as well. Another one that can be brought up is when John Wick bought the rights to 7th C from Alderac and made his own thing, thing with that, which I already reviewed. But another thing I can draw from the word ancient in this case is my fascination with historical fantasy style games. Whether it be what if stores of antiquity like mazes and minotaurs or more somewhat contemporary things like Dogs in the Vineyard, there is a certain fascination with bringing ancient history into a role-playing setting with a, bit of, with a bit of a fantastical twist. I think it in part has to do with the fact that a lot of us grew up on classical fairy tales in one form or another, whether it be Aesop or something that Disney ripped off, or some other variation of Long Ago in a Land Far Away. There was also the fact that Joseph Campbell once equated the Western to a modern fairy tale, which, to a certain extent, I can completely agree with. The bottom line is a lot of our inspirations are built off of things from the past, some of these things more blatant than others. In that regard, I will admit a fascination in discovering the chain of events, the inspiration that led to another inspiration that led to a current inspiration. To that end, I do watch a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff when it comes to developments of, of various entertainments, because I like to see what particular pieces were brought together to create this idea that's in front of me. Now, of course, one of the obvious examples of this kind of thing would be Star Wars, but it's not limited to just that, and it's certainly not limited to just one set of films. And I suppose another ultimate example of this kind of thing is the rise of what some might derisively call western manga or works that have a very manga style influence but weren't made in japan i remember in the early 2000s there was a huge amount of debate about whether these things counted as anime or manga if you want to get particular and i argue that they did because the origin plays less of a factor than the style itself that's not to say the country of origin doesn't play a factor in the original creation of what would become manga and anime, but that its current form is less consequential to the country of origin. This is also why I was not surprised when I started seeing various RPGs that try to emulate that to some degree, whether it be the works of Artel Sorian through games like Mekton, or some of the more recent examples with Valor, or even the more broad interpretations like the infamous Big Eyes, Small Mouth. Any way you slice it, creatives will always look to the past in order to be inspired for the present. That's not a criticism of anybody or any field, that's just how these things work in art, and that's how they're going to continue to work in the future. 